What if I told you that the greatest ocean on our planet is not the Pacific, not the Atlantic, not the Indian? What if this colossal body of water is not on the surface at all, but hidden deep within the earth, a secret world locked hundreds of miles beneath our very feet? For generations, we have looked to the stars for signs of water, for the building blocks of life. We have sent rovers to Mars and probes past Jupiter, all in the search for this precious liquid. Yet, all this time, the biggest water reservoir in our own solar system might have been right here, a silent dark ocean cradled in the planet's deep interior, waiting for us to finally hear its story. This isn't a tale from a science fiction novel. It is a reality that is reshaping everything we thought we knew about the planet we call home. Scientists in their unending quest have stumbled upon something truly paradigm shifting. So, how did we find an ocean that no one can see? The answer lies not in looking, but in listening. Scientists became planetary detectives using the entire globe as their laboratory. Their most powerful tool? Earthquakes. When an earthquake occurs, it doesn't just shake the ground beneath our feet. It sends powerful shock waves, seismic waves, racing through the planet in all directions. These waves travel through different materials at different speeds. By tracking them, we can map the unseen layers of Earth's interior, like a doctor using ultrasound to see inside a patient. For this discovery, scientists deployed a massive network of instruments across the United States. They used more than 2,000 seismometers. Close up, sensitive devices that detect the faintest tremors. They patiently waited, listening for earthquakes from around the world. Those quakes sent signals through the deep rock beneath North America. Each time a wave passed through a different layer, its speed changed slightly. These subtle shifts are the clues, the fingerprints of hidden deep earth structures. It was a monumental task of data collection, a planetary scale experiment. The breakthrough came when researchers analyzed data from hundreds of earthquakes. They noticed something peculiar. In a specific region deep underground, seismic waves were slowing down dramatically. This was the aha moment. The waves behaved as if passing through rock soaked with water. The rock wasn't just damp, it was saturated. Intense pressure and temperature at that depth caused partial melting. Water present created a slushy, wet zone. That zone grabbed the seismic waves and slowed their journey. Using seismic tomography, scientists built a 3D map of the mantle. It was like putting on geologic glasses that see through hundreds of miles of rock. The data painted a clear picture, a massive anomaly, a region where conditions trapped water within the crystal structure of a special rock. It wasn't an open liquid cavern, but something stranger and wonderful, a new piece of the planetary puzzle revealed by interpreting Earth's own vibrations. This hidden ocean challenges our perception of Earth. Where exactly is this colossal, hidden reservoir? You would have to travel deep, deep into the earth. The journey begins by passing through the crust we live on, and then plunging into the mantle, the thick layer of silicate rock between the crust and the outer core. This ocean is located in a special zone known as the transition zone, which sits between 410 and 660 kilometers. That's about 250 to 410 miles below the surface. This is a region of immense pressure, a place where the familiar minerals we know are crushed into new, exotic forms, creating a boundary layer between the upper and lower mantle. When you picture an ocean, you likely imagine vast open water, waves crashing on a shore. The deep earth ocean is nothing like that. It is an alien environment, governed by physics that seems strange to us on the surface. There is no liquid water sloshing around. Instead, the water exists as hydroxyl ions chemically bound inside the crystal structure of ringwoodite. Under the immense pressure of the mantle, more than 200,000 times sea level, this is the only way for water to exist. The appearance would also be completely different. Ringwoodite itself has a brilliant blue color. Imagine being inside a colossal, glittering sapphire. Temperatures are scorching, over 5 top and 100 degrees 6, about 2,700 degrees degrees. The deep earth ocean as far as we know is lifeless, its purpose is geological, not biological. It acts as a massive buffer, a planetary regulator. It influences tectonic plates, shapes volcanism, and moderates Earth's machinery over millions of years. This discovery isn't just a fascinating piece of trivia, it completely revolutionizes our understanding of the Earth's water cycle. For a long time, we thought the water cycle was a relatively shallow process. Water evaporates, forms clouds, falls as rain, and flows back to the sea. But this new finding suggests the cycle is much, much bigger. 
it implies a whole earth water cycle, where surface water can be transported deep into the mantle, and over geological time, return to the surface. It connects the world we see with the hidden world below. At subduction zones, one tectonic plate slides beneath another, carrying huge amounts of water locked in seafloor minerals. As it sinks to the transition zone, heat and pressure squeeze the water out. That freed water is absorbed and trapped by thirsty ringwoodite, storing it in a deep earth reservoir. This creates a dynamic balance. Slow convection brings water-rich rock up. Ringwoodite destabilizes and releases its trapped water, fueling magma and returning deep earth water to the atmosphere and oceans. The presence of such a vast internal ocean helps to solve one of the longest standing mysteries in Earth science. Where did our water come from? For decades, many thought Earth's water was delivered from space by icy comets and asteroids bombarding the young planet. While that likely played a role, it may not be the whole story. This discovery supports an alternative idea. A significant portion of Earth's water may have been here from the very beginning, incorporated as the planet formed from the primordial solar nebula. This internal origin theory suggests that Earth was born wet, as Earth separated into core, mantle, and crust, water was trapped deep within the interior. Over eons volcanic activity released some of this primordial water to the surface, a process called outgassing, which condensed to form the first oceans, lakes, and rivers. Both processes likely happened, internal water, later supplemented by icy impacts. The Ringwoodite's ocean shows Earth had a massive built-in water supply. Earth wasn't just a passive recipient, it actively forged its life-sustaining environment. This changes our search for life. Rocky worlds may be habitable, even without visible surface oceans, if they hide vast internal reservoirs. Hidden water could drive plate tectonics and volcanism. Key to climate stability. One of the most exciting aspects of this deep ocean is that it acts as an ancient, pristine library of Earth's history. Surface waters are endlessly recycled and mixed, masking their earliest composition. But water trapped in ringwoodite may have been isolated for billions of years, a time capsule holding clues to early Earth. Tiny diamond inclusions, like one from Brazil, are our messengers, revealing deep mantle water locked in minerals. By analyzing their chemistry, we glimpse the planet's primordial past. This hidden reservoir helps explain plate tectonics, earthquakes, mountain building, the living surface of our world. Water is an excellent lubricant. Released fluids can weaken rock and ease plate motion. It may even trigger enigmatic deep earthquakes via hydrofracturing under immense pressure. Plumes ascending through the water-rich transition zone can pick up ancient water, explaining volatile-rich magmas and their eruptions. The discovery of this hidden ocean is not an end, but a beginning. Scientists are refining global maps to confirm whether a continuous shell of water-bearing rock encircles Earth. In labs, diamond anvil cells recreate transition zone pressures to learn how minerals behave. Each experiment and seismic reading adds a pixel to this hidden world, reminding us how much we still have to learn. The most exciting chapters may lie not in the heavens above, but in the mysterious water-rich depths far below.